Uh, Senator Walters. Uh, Waters. Thank you, Chair. Hi, folks. Thanks for coming along today. Um, both the Law Council of Australia and the Chief Justice of the Family Court have expressed serious concerns about the impacts of the cuts to legal aid funding. Could you please talk us through, from your experience um, in the Family Court, what those funding shortfalls will mean for women and their children subjected to violence? Well, I'm not really certain how I can actually respond to it. Well, I think that's really a very open-ended question, <coughs> Senator. I mean, you can't, you can't ask an official, um, you can't, it's not fair to an official to ask him to be a commentator on um, a government policy. I mean, the, these, budget, uh, these um, uh, budget savings were forced upon the government, as you know, by the previous government. Um, and um, they will obviously, obviously self-evidently mean that there are less resources available to certain um, functions of government, including um, um, uh, these witnesses as well. But it's not, I think, fair to ask them to make a kind of a general political comment and well, with respect or, to or to assume a causality either, by the way. With respect to Tenny, perhaps I can clarify my question. Sure, in I'm your just inviting you to do so and to narrow it, perhaps. If, if you'll allow me to do so, thank you. In your experience as administrators of the Family Court, um, to which women and families seek justice through your court, um, what effect, in your experience, will the reductions in legal aid funding, including to women who've been subjected to domestic violence, have on their ability to access justice through your court? How will it change things? Uh, is this specific to women and children or to everyone? To women and children facing well, domestic would you violence. know that uh, as opposed to a general reduction, you know, anyhow. Why don't we, yeah, let's answer it to the best of your experience. Yeah, it's a pretty difficult question for me to answer with any great clarity. But I mean, all I can say is that I think any, any reduction in legal fund and legal aid will have some sort of impact on the amount of representation. But there are a number of other organisations that have been established to provide advice. There are community legal services at the courts. There's uh, information on websites all over the place. Uh, we have the courts have run uh, many self or un unrepresented litigant projects providing more information. There's information on YouTube. Uh, there's a family law assistance program been running in Dandenong, which directs impacts directly on the, uh, the people coming to the federal circuit court in Dandenong. So there are a range of mm. other organisations other than legal aid themselves who provide advice and assistance to people who uh, uh, will end up uh, regrettably in the, in the family law courts mm. uh, system. So, uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, I think it, it follows the event that any reduction in funding anywhere is going to have some impact uh, on, on the, per the people who provide the service. Um, I should so add, Senator uh, Waters, go ahead. that it's not at all to be, t uh, it's not at all clear that it's right to say that there's been a reduction in legal aid funding available to family law litigants. There have been some reductions, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But there's been an increase in the aggregate proportion of, of legal aid funding to litigants. I don't know how many times I had to say that in this estimates. The reason I'm, uh, numerous times, but it's directly responsive to your question. The reason I made a decision that I wanted to spend all of the legal aid money on casework is to prioritise the concerns of um, litigants in vulnerable circumstances. And the two major ones uh, categories are family law cases and also criminal cases, but the, but the largest of all is family law cases. And much as uh, worthy work is done um, in policy and advocacy, and much as there's been criticism of defunding uh, environmental defenders' offices, um, for instance, and I know you're interested in this issue. I am, um, but not in the family court session. Yeah, but, but, and but, I have but, limited but this, time, but, attorney. But this, is my, this is my point, Senator. Please make or, it succinctly. This, this is my point, Senator Waters. You can't on the one hand say, um, well, you shouldn't have reduced the funding to family With law litigants, to Tony, and on I'm the other and at the, and at the same time, and, I'm to and at the same the time say, um, you shouldn't have um, failed to prioritise um, casework. The decision to prioritise casework is to get more money 
to family law litigants mm. and people if like If you could them, just allow me less. to question the official's attorney, that's precisely what I'm seeking to ask about. Um, am I correct, before we had that little interlude, um, am I correct in that you're saying that reductions to legal aid will have the effect that there will be more self-represented litigants before your court? Or, or perhaps in addition to that, is it your experience that women will in fact withdraw their applications for justice to your court? That's what I'm trying to get at. But, but you're assuming there's a reduction of legal, aid, of legal aid funding to family law cases, and that is not established. Well, I, I am assuming that. Well, yeah, that your assumption is, is, based on, uh, is based on a guess that when the... Well, my, my assumption was based on my understanding of the budget and that there'd been uh, $15 but, but, million but, but, dollar cut to legal aid funding. The budget talks about some reductions to aggregate legal aid funding. That's true. I don't dispute that. We, that was forced on us by the previous government. But... And that won't have any effect but, on women? No, 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 but, but, Senator, Senator, that legal aid funding used to be spent on a greater variety of causes than it will be now. So are you guaranteeing so that's not going I'm, to come no, I'm from, your from women? 100 per cent of the legal aid funding from a slightly reduced pool will be spent on casework of which family law cases are the largest component, whereas pre, under the previous government, um, less than 100 per cent <coughs> was spent on, um, on casework of which family law cases were, were the largest, um, were, the, were the largest claimants. So, so are you guaranteeing that there is no reduction in funding to family law casework as a result of the slightly reduced pie, as you call it? Uh, what I'm guaranteeing is that family law matters and frontline services, what I generally call casework, will be absolutely prioritised so that if there's an effect, and it's by no means clear there'll be any effect, if well, that's your effect, job to answer. That is that a reduction or not? It should be clear. You're the but, Attorney but, General. But, well, it, but is it, this is a matter of arithmetic, Senator. Yes, I'm if, asking if you to answer. You, is there a reduction? If you shrink the pie, but within the shrunken pie, you increase to 100 per cent yes. what is going um, to one particular uh, recipient, yes. then it does not at all follow that the amount going to that particular recipient is going to be less. Which is why I've asked you the question, will it be less for the case of women seeking to access the family court? Well, we'll have to see. We'll have well, to see the way... With respect, that, you wrote the, the budget, attorney. Is it, a, is it a yes or no? It's not a will we we'll have, have to see. We'll have to see the way in which this operates because demands on, um, on, on the pool of funds, as you know, fluctuate um, from time to time. Um, they fluctuate between categories of cases. But what I'm guaranteeing to you is that 100% of the Commonwealth's money is going to be spent on frontline services. OK, well, given we have the officials of the family court here, I'd kind of prefer to hear from them since we have well, a limited opportunity to do well, that, so. That, I can talk to you any right, old time. But you're asking them Attorney a question General, they can't, can't answer. That. So you're asking them a question that it is not possible for them to answer and it's not fair to them. In your experience, is the uh, level of self-representation which is influenced by the level of legal aid funding provided from time to time by the government of the day. Um, what impact does the need to self-represent have on female um, <coughs> applicants to the family court in terms of whether or not they sustain their application or whether they withdraw it? I, I'm not, I just couldn't answer that question, Senator. I have no idea. Do you not uh, collect statistics on the effect of self-representation on whether litigants pursue their application? Uh, not specifically, no. I mean, we, we know when people withdraw their application, <coughs> whether that's to do with legal aid or not, I'm not entirely certain. I think that's a, a, a research project which would, would be outside the capacity of the court to do, I would think. I mean, it's a, quite a complex question that you ask. Is that you aware of anybody's discussed. looking at that? It does seem to be a relevant question. Well, the, the I impact. can answer that question. Um, the Institute of Family Studies is the body. Um, it's not the only one, but... Um, the Institute of Family Studies is one body that, that looks at, at these matters. The Family Law Council is another. Uh, the Family Law Council um, actually some years ago um, conducted a study on um, unrepresented litigants in the family court. And uh, I'm not sure if you were in the hearing room when I said this uh, a little while ago, but I, I, a few weeks ago I had a meeting with the chair of the Family Law Council and we are we are considering giving them a new reference uh, to uh, conduct 
a, a, an updated study on unrepresented litigants in the family court and their needs. Excellent. You're considering that. Can I yes. ask what the time frame for the decision on that is? It'll be quite soon. Okay. And will that come with additional resourcing? No, the Family Law Court is already resourced. No, you're talking about the Institute of Family Studies, are you no, not? No, no, I, I mentioned the Institute of Family Studies and the Family Law Council. Sorry, so who will be charged with possibly conducting uh, possible The discussion I had was with the Chair study? of the Family Law Council. And will they be provided resourcing to do that study? No, because they're already resourced. And what work will they not do as a result of doing this good None. work? None. Okay, the, are they a magic pudding or a council? No, because they, they a bit like the Law Reform Commission, they from time to time um, undertake bodies of work. Good. Well, I hope that that um, proceeds. Can I attempt to ask the officials some questions? Well, 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 um, ask, the, ask the officials questions if you like, <laughs> Senator. But that is the point of estimates, don't, don't, so thank don't, you, don't, Attorney. No, no, actually, the point of estimates is to ask questions of the government, and technically every question is to the minister. Well, I'm sure you're having a lovely time, every, but I would like to avail myself of the expertise the of the Family but, Court but, but officials please, here, please if don't I may. Ask questions, please don't ask questions of officials that embarrass them because they're not in a position to answer them. And if you want to know the policies I'm sure of the government, I'm sure they're big enough to um, answer me. to the extent of their expertise, but thanks. Yeah, yeah, um, I'll, thanks. I'll listen more carefully, Senator Brandis. Uh, Senator, Singh, uh, Senator Waters. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to access to justice for women in regional areas, um, can you talk about the effect of the, um, what I understand, and I'm sure the attorney will correct me if I'm in any way mistaken, um, the reduction in um, hearings in regional areas of the family court since 2008? Uh, the primary responsibility for uh, circuiting in rural and regional areas lies with the Federal Circuit Court, mm -hmm. and the Federal Circuit Court extensively circuits to uh, all parts of Australia. Uh, with the exception of the uh, Western Australia, which is serviced by the Family Court of Western Australia. The Family Court of Australia, because of that change in uh, role, if you like, uh, stepped back from uh, running regular circuits to rural and regional Australia, but there is a commitment by the court to uh, attend anywhere in the country where there's a case that demands the presence of a Family Court judge uh, and on a special fixture. So if uh, the Federal Circuit Court, for example, uh, identified a case that required a, a Superior Court judge to hear it, then the Chief Justice of the Family Court would provide a judge to attend at that location and hear that particular matter. That's the arrangement that's in place. So the Family Court doesn't, because it doesn't have to, uh, regularly circuit to uh, all parts of Australia. That's a role undertaken by the Federal Circuit Court. But yes, it still will attend rural and regional areas for special fixtures for cases that require the attention of a superior court judge. And how would an applicant know to make such a request? Are there information services available so that... Well, that would be an assessment made by the uh, federal circuit court judge. It would be up to that person to say, this is a case that should be transferred to the family court. And that happens both not in rural and regional, but it happens throughout the whole system. There are matters right, transfer between the two courts. If, uh, if, there's a, if there's a matter comes before a federal circuit court judge who thinks that this is a matter more appropriately dealt with mm -hmm. for whatever reasons in the family court, and that matter is transferred to the family court. Okay, so would that require two hearings, say, for example, rather than just one? Well, it'd I'm be thinking of the burden on the applicant to be able to get there, for example, and of course the cost to engage the legal team for the day, unless they're sadly self-represented, which unfortunately it seems to be not I'm, studied I'm, by I'm your I'm not court. talking about a, a trial being put off saying these things are done as a it's preliminary a arrangement, hearing. so it's more like a directions hearing or something. So sure, it's a, which still a entails a court hearing. They'd be, they'd be there anyway, anyway for that process and not, you're not necessarily going to get a trial on the day that you first appear in court. There's a whole lot of other processes that you need to go through. So I don't think I think it's an extravagance to probably say there's an extra appearance required. I don't think that's right Look, at all. Look, I, I will put some questions on the notice because I, I do yeah. want to understand this, sure. but am I, am I correct in that rather than having direct access to the family court in regional areas, that there is now an additional step where an applicant will have to go through the federal circuit court, have a directions hearing, be told that actually, no, you do need that other court, and then have a second court appearance. No, is no, that, um, is that's that not correct? Right. That's not you, right. could, you could still make application to the, federal, uh, to the family court directly, mm -hmm. but if it was a matter that the family court considered was a matter that should be in the federal circuit court, then it would be transferred back to that court, and vice versa. That's how the I'm system works. I'm talking about works. matters that belong in the family court. Yeah, well, you can make, there's a, there's a protocol between the two courts, which I'm, I haven't got with me, Senator, but I'm quite happy to provide to the committee, which is 
okay. uh, largely so can adhered I to, which then... provides for uh, litigants to decide which is the most sure. appropriate court they so should So can I confirm in. then that the family court will still make those regional trips? Oh, the where Chief the Justice stated determines. that uh, uh, as, a, as a policy of the court, that the family court, if there's a matter that's identified that requires the uh, a superior court judge, a family court judge to hear it, mm. then the Chief Justice will provide a judge in that location to hear that matter. Okay, and there won't be any sort of cost considerations that that will happen as a matter of course? Yeah, that's the judge will go there. Well, thank you for clarifying that. <coughs> well, it was never unclear, Senator. That. You, you, you seem to be implying that well, there might have been some change. perhaps your friends at the Australian might change. need a phone call um, from you, was, Senator Brandis, because uh, it's never in today's unclear. paper. So what um, Mr Foster has told you um, is as it is and as it has been. Um, well, it was reported differently today in perhaps your newspaper of choice, The Australian, and, and hence my line of questioning. I'm really pleased to have it clarified that that was um, inaccurately reported. Fancy that in The Australian. Thanks, everyone. All right, thanks. Are you finished, Senator? Uh, thanks, Senator Waters. Uh,